Marilyn, in trying to really understand what our physical world is all about, we know that the 20th century had these two dramatic changes with relativity from Einstein, quantum mechanics, totally changed our worldview. From your work in parapsychology and psi work, is there any possibility that some of that, if it's real, could affect our understanding of the physical world to the same extent of these dramatic changes in the past? What's that expression about the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior? And if you accept that argument, then you'd have to say that looking historically at what we've known about the nature of reality, it has changed periodically over time. It's expanded, or it's been incorporated, or it's been refuted. Um, and so over history, we have discovered that we only have partial understandings of what is true. So you, you take these two great discoveries that have happened in physics, and you begin to think, well, what are the implications of that? And then you think about the kinds of contributions that psi phenomena might have to offer in our understanding of what is the nature of reality, what is the nature of physicality. Um, my belief is that that's going to change, and that we are going to amass new kinds of data derived from different sources that are going to force us to gain a different model or a different understanding of what is the nature of physical reality. I think that's an exciting opportunity for us. As we think about this convergence between great truth systems, science and physicalism on one hand, spirituality, religion on the other, um, what seems to me the, the opportunity of this moment in time is that we may develop a new understanding of material life, you know, matter as it, as it exists. So in Tibetan Buddhism, for example, you can take this notion that, that we are physical, but our physicality is imbued with spirit, that there is a more animistic set of possibilities for our unfolding. Uh, I think science is now trying to, you know, reconcile itself to these kinds of metaphysical views. And you mean this more than metaphorically. You mean this in some real substance like quantum mechanics is real In substance. the same way that quantum physics, and I don't think actually that we have even uh, begun to incorporate the implications of quantum physics into our everyday cosmology. You know, you think about it, we still talk about the sun setting every day. Well, it isn't the sun setting, it's the earth rising. So our language is still embedded in an old cosmology. I think that the notion of a quantum world as compared to a Newtonian world um, is radical. And even though it doesn't make a lot of sense to us on our day-to-day, -day, you know, living scale, um, we're still very much depend on, you know, traditional forms of causality. I think as this quantum world becomes more part of our everyday experience, we're going to begin to imbue our reality with a different kind of causal model of what is possible. Um, and it's no longer that there are absolute physical realities. You know, you think about this table. Well, it seems pretty real. It seems, you know, pretty hard and stable. And yet, it's mostly space. You know, and so what kind of understanding of reality comes when you think about the space between the parts? It becomes something much more um, engaging. It becomes much more dynamic. Well, I mean, the science of solid objects and uh, the repulsiveness between electromagnetic forces is, is pretty, pretty well known and pretty, uh, pretty physical and there's nothing mystical or mysterious about it. Uh, but if we talk about quantum physics, I mean we still, this whole spooky action at a distance notion mm -hmm. is a deep mystery. We still do not understand at all how it is that two particles separated in space can have some relationship. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense to us yet. It will come to make a lot more sense to us. And I think in that process of you know, meaning making around this new model of causality, it will begin to change our definition of physicality. And therefore, we will, you know, as the 21st century unfolds, begin to develop a more dynamic model of what is matter. Without getting into the discussion of the reality of parapsychological phenomena and the statistical replicability of psi, assuming it is there in some way, however modest, assuming that, 
What then would be the implications for the current understanding even of quantum mechanics or of, of the physical world? What, what are some possible ways that psi phenomena could have an impact on our enlarged understanding of the physical? If you think about the fact that your intention may be causal, that your consciousness may actually be able to reach out and engage the physical world, that your, your prayers may be able to evoke a healing response in another person, um, and even if that person is on the other side of the planet, if you begin to embrace the possibility that those data are real and that they have implications then for how we live our lives, then you can no longer say that it's enough to be responsible for your actions. You actually have to begin to be responsible for the very thoughts you're thinking. You've been working in this area of uh, medical healing, intentionality. Uh, it just seems incredible to me, it's the only word I can pick out, that, that you can focus your intentionality, not in some blurry, genetic, generic way, but on, on an individual or on, on something. How, how do you focus your medical intentionality or prayer for healing on the person in room 315 and not in the room, miss and hit the room 317. Well, how is it that you're able to describe for me the carpet in your living room compared to all the other carpets you've seen since you were home last time? Mm -hmm. We have the capacity to distinguish and to focus. Um, we can bring our attention to various objects of inquiry. Mm -hmm. So it's about sort of harnessing the intention with the attention. When you look at people who seem to be best at these kind of lab-based studies, they are people who are martial artists, meditators, um, or classically trained musicians. So what do those three groups have in common? Mm -hmm. They have some capacity to focus intention and harness attention toward a particular outcome. So they're successful in doing that. We've now completed, um, myself and a group of colleagues, about 35 studies that under randomized double-blind protocols demonstrate the ability of one person's intention to influence another person's physiology. The implications of that are that we are much more fundamentally interconnected than simply the kind of billiard ball, ball causality that, that we have learned from Newtonian physics. And that would give us a greater physical world than we ever had imagined, even greater than the quantum world. It will imbue our material world with a, a greater sense of possibility. I don't think it refutes the fact of physicality or material world. It simply expands it to a greater sense of possibility.